All right, going live in just a couple moments here. All right, okay. Hey, Hacksters. I'm a little disoriented today because I am, for the first time, streaming from a Windows computer, which is terrifying. I got it to work with this Azure Sphere kit, which is uh, this device here that I talked about last week. Uh, actually, these little guys here are Microelectronica Click Relay Boards, and you don't actually need them, but they're going to be featured in some upcoming broadcasts. Anyway, here's the, guy, the little guy. I'm having a little trouble uh, getting it to focus and stuff. But I have got a Blink application loaded, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, this is, yeah, the Azure Sphere kit that we talked about before. And um, I haven't quite got my settings dialed in on here, so it's going to be a little weird, but we're going to go over the browser here. And what I wanted to show you today is building the Blink application. Um, oh boy, that's really uh, that's really special, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just making sure my audio is working. Oh, there. That should be better. That should be better. Sorry if there was a little weird audio there for a minute. Um, <laughs> Still getting the hang of this new system. So, yeah, we have this Azure Sphere device here, uh, which is not quite in focus, but it will be soon. And there we go. Uh, it is running a little Blink application, which you can find on the Microsoft website. You can also find some info on uh, setting it up on the Hackster blog, which is just blog.hackster.io, uh, where you can sign up to receive one of these kits for free. We're giving away 20,000 of them, which is ridiculous. So we uh, definitely want you to have the materials that you need to get started with it. So first up, Evan Rust has wrote, written a getting started for our blog. And then also Alistair has written a whole explainer about the kit itself so that you can learn all about what kinds of stuff it can do. And at the bottom of that one, actually, there's a, my unboxing video. So lots of cool stuff there, including all these deets. Alistair is a genius and an expert, so there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. Um, I have do not track set up. But yeah! So when it comes to actually getting this set up, I had the most trouble as someone who doesn't work a ton with enterprise software uh, in terms of just getting my users set up, and that's something that is also linked from the getting started that uh, Evan wrote for the blog. If you check that out, he mentions all this stuff about setting up a user and a tenant and stuff. And that stuff was kind of hard for me to navigate because you have to make sure that you have an organization created in the um, in the system and stuff like that and, and do all this monkeying around. So that was a little tough for me. But once you do have your user set up in the Microsoft Azure backend, then it becomes pretty trivial to set up your device itself. And so I'm going to be following this guide, the quick start for building the Blink application. Now, the thing with this is that they don't actually recommend this as a starting point for building your own apps. They have a whole other set of things on GitHub for that. They've got the Azure Sphere samples repo under the Azure user, and then you can look up the samples folder for that, and they've got all kinds of stuff, including like GPIOs, uh, I2C, SPI, UART, and stuff, and I think the I2C is what you would be using for um, working with Grove modules, and actually uh, Seed Studio has put out their own uh, set of samples for the Grove Shield, which is for a different model of the Azure Sphere, but I think could be tweaked to work with this. There is also a set, uh, a whole repo of code to work with the click modules from Avnet. The click modules are these guys that I showed you with the relays and stuff. It's sort of like the, uh, <laughs> it's sort of like the uh, Grove modules, except they have a slightly different interface. And so yeah, what you're gonna be doing is for this, you just go and do all the setup stuff with your account and stuff. Um, and then you're going to use this prep debug command in order to set up your device, which right now is locked. You can't upload stuff to it. For example, if I try and hit uh, function F5 here, it's going to give me a problem. Yeah. 
Uh, it says, device update failed, see the output window for details. Device would not delete app. If you have not yet run AZ Sphere device prep debug, then please do so and try again. Uh, and that is exactly what we're about to do. So uh, let's see if we can make this a little bigger. Come on. I want, I want big. Nope. That's not what I want. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, AZ Sphere device prep dash debug and that basically unlocks the device when you get it it's in this locked state um, and in order to control it you need to set it up into debug mode and at that point you'll be able to talk to it through the visual studio software i realize that my id and stuff is visible here just don't take advantage of it please um and as soon as that's done uh, deploying de 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 de. cool completed successfully and what I have here is this app that is provided by them um, oh you know what actually you the way that you get this blink program is you uh, start a new project in Visual Studio and then you start it from a template and you just search for Blink in there and it comes up. It's one of a, just a few example, different pieces of code that are already loaded in the software. Uh, it's called like AZ Sphere Blink or something like that. And you can instantly run this. So all I'm going to do is take this default code that I've done nothing to and I'm going to hit uh, function F5 and it's going to, I've enabled the output here. So at the bottom of the window, it shows output from device update. <laughs> and I'm going to switch our view here for a second just to make this a little bit more visible for you. Oh, wait, what? Now we're getting a permission denied thingy. What? Foolishness. I'm going to try and make this a little bit bigger for you so that it's more visible what exactly is going on. So the output window that we have at the bottom there that says show output from device output is telling me that it has a, an error opening the GBIOs and that permission is denied. That is suboptimal. Oh, you know what I think I did is I changed one of these pins it should be nine. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this. Da, 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 da. Come on. Ah, there we go. Command completed successfully. Much better. And now it's telling me that the debugger server is starting. Debug server. And if I hide myself, you can see. Over on the right here, we've got the uh, device output. Right there. And so it says it's remote debugging from host 192.168.35.1 and visit the uh, Azure website for extensible samples, uh, those being stored on GitHub. So in the code itself, yeah, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. Basically, it's uh, this little guy down here. The user controllable LED is now blinking. And that is GPIO 9. Now it does say that that is the green channel in here. And I need to look up what the other color channels are because I want to make it do blue because that's obviously superior. Uh, <laughs> you've also got a couple of different buttons here. I think actually this might change the rate it blinks at if you... Uh... No? Maybe that's the other example. However, it does change it if you change the code here, which we can take a look at. So at the start, we include a bunch of libraries that let us do stuff, including taking, keeping track of time, uh, controlling the GPIOs, handling errors and things like that. You've got your uh, main function in here that says, all it does is repeatedly toggles GPIO 9, which is the green channel of the RGB LED on the MT3620 RGB 
Use this app to test that device and that SDK installation succeeded so that you can build, deploy, and debug an app with Visual Studio and that you can deploy an app over the air per the instructions here. And they have a link to another uh, set of instructions which is useful for uh, later on. Not only can you deploy code to something that's plugged into your computer in debug mode, but then you can set it into field mode, which uh, makes it so that it's locked again, and you can deploy updates to it over the air. So I'm going to stop this right now, doop, 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 and it's going to stop blinking. <laughs> it is frozen on, on green. Boop. And we're going to take a look at the code real quick. So you're logging the stuff. This is the message that we got in the debug log. And here we're going to open up the GPI09 as an output and set its value to high. And then <laughs> we got this error before. Uh, that was when I had selected the wrong GPIO. I had set it as 8 because I was just going to try and play around and figure out what the other color channels were just by, you know, uh, brute force. <laughs> and that happened before, now it's working, so we didn't get that message again. And then you're doing this sleep time, uh, and then, you know, turn it on, and then turn it off, or rather turn it off, then on, then off, then on, then off, then on, etc. Uh, so it's very similar, actually, to the structure of a, uh, an Arduino thingy. You set up all your stuff at the top, and then you have this while loop, which is basically, you know, an infinite loop that repeats as long as the program is running, and that'll do whatever you want it to. And if I change this, uh, since both the low and high values, turning the LED off and on, use the same sleep time variable, uh, whatever I set this to be is going to be both how long it stays off and how long it stays on. So if I deploy this again now, thump, it should take twice as long to turn off and on. Do you get to see the little server messages? I don't know. So now you see that it's doing the blink thing again, but it's pretty lazy. And if you're familiar with Visual Studio more than I am, I have like a few hours experience messing around in here and trying to do different stuff, then you'll probably be up and running much, much faster than me. But uh, if I had been able to watch this video, <laughs> uh, actually, no, uh, I think most of what took the time was just setting up the accounts and stuff. And once you've got that down, it's pretty easy. Um, honestly, this, this plugged in stuff. And I did run the over the air updating examples. I found that it seemed to not work, but that it just takes a while to upload or to update the new code. So what happens with the over the air updating? Uh, let me pull that up again for you really quick. We're going to go into infinity mode for a second. Don't freak out. It's normal. I promise. Okay. Uh, the next stage, I think, is prepping your device for ODA, OTA over-the-air updates. And the deal with that is that uh, you create a feed and you add your new image to the feed, your project image to the feed, and then uh, your device is subscribed to that feed, basically. And every time that it resets or connects to Wi-Fi, it's going to pull down whatever the latest thing is on the feed and install it and run it. So that took longer than I expected, but that could have been like an internet issue, honestly. Uh, and it's pretty simple. They have really good instructions here that help a lot. Um, you say Asus for your device prep field, which is that thing that locks the device again. You create a new device group name, unless your company already has a device group, uh, and a new SKU name that refers to your device. And you can put in a SKU description if you want to tell, so say like, you know, Alex's Azure Sphere or whatever. Um, and that's for the new device group. Anyway, I can have a whole flock of them and, and make my own device group name with a description. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the way that you would do it the first time, and then the second time you just give it the device group ID and SKU ID that were generated from that, which are given to you as feedback when you uh, create those. So I could show you mine, but it's easier just to... <laughs> oh yeah, on here, yeah. So the feedback that you get from running AZ Sphere device prep field, etc, etc, you get this 
uh, logged, which is it created a new device group with that name. And then you get the device group ID in this feedback here. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to tell if I'm pointing at the right thing. And it's so weird to me that you can see everything I'm doing in the console. Uh, and then also when you create the new SKU, you also get an SKU ID from there. And that's what you put into the command when you're using a pre-existing device group. And again, this was really easy, like deceptively easy. I thought that it was not working because it just took a little while. Turns out I'm just impatient. <laughs> but then, yeah, once you get to that level, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Explore the Azure Sphere samples repo on GitHub. You can go to the uh, click modules examples. You can go to the Grove Shield examples. Uh, and of course, oh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, this is another one that I wanted to check out, actually. Uh, this is for a slightly different model of the Azure Sphere kit. Um, but I think this could be tweaked to give you uh, a way to interface this kit with the Grove modules. Then you have our blog post, which you should totally check out. And to wrap up, once again, you should... Oh yeah, we have a contest. We have a contest going on for this. Uh, just go to hackster.io slash contests. Hit secure everything with Azure Sphere with Avnet and Microsoft. <laughs> and you can win not only one of these fabulous kits, but also... Um, oh, I'm registered for the kit or the, the contest. Cool. I don't even know. <laughs> you have 68 more days to... Uh, submit your project. They close on September 29th, and then you'll hear back by October 17th. Uh, and yeah, you register for your key free kit on Element 14, and that's the same link that you'll get from our blog. Again, there's 20,000 of these. Hey, come back. Ah, how do I Windows? <laughs> oh, that takes you to the contest. <laughs> there you go. You can click this link. It'll take you. They're all. These are also in the blog post. Actually, this this link is, and this is where you go to hit the orange button and say register for your free kit. You will be responsible for shipping costs, and there are some countries to which we cannot ship because of the world and politics and stuff. And I'm so glad that I do not have to keep track of that stuff. Um, if we can't ship to you, then you will know. And it's too bad, and we are very sad as well. Um, but yeah, check out the, the whole contest. It's very exciting. Um, we want to see where everyone is that's going to be connecting these to the globe. And uh, the kit is all about security, so especially IoT security projects that you have in mind, we would love to see. And you can check out the prizes here. You can get a HoloLens, you can get a service laptop, you can get a Raspi 4, yeah! All kinds of cool stuff. And then, of course, at the bottom, you've got your getting started resources, all kinds of cool stuff. So check those out! Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this was edifying for you as much as it has been for me. Oh, you can see that! It's so weird! Stop looking at my screen! <laughs> Uh, but yeah, don't you want one of these? I think you want one. I, I, I think it's going to be really fun to play with. And I'm going to be taking it on some travels. We're going to be at DEF CON. We're going to be at Detroit Maker Fair. I'm going to be at Detroit Maker Fair. It's going to be awesome. That's this coming weekend. And um, a bunch of other upcoming things. It's going to be really swell. You can find us. Hack on. <laughs>